Hello again, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do another watercolor and um, I think I will uh, add this. Really it's not for a particular class, it's just one I wanted to do. It's a beautiful little sunset I picked up the other evening on a drive in the country road and uh, the sun was setting in the west and I was able to stop my car and get a quick couple of photos. So it's a snow scene. Again, it's really still cold here in Indiana and uh, had a lot of uh, snow and uh, still around, so I thought I would do another snow scene and I uh, hope you like it. It's going to be kind of cool and snowy and cold looking, but I'm going to try to do it fairly quickly, fairly loose, and uh, we're going to be doing it on Fabriano Artistico 300 pound cold press watercolor paper today using the paints that uh, I've usually used called my Mary Blue, and I will go through those in a minute. The brush set is one from Sterling Edwards, which I've used before. I'll show you those in a second. So the scene, as I said, is really just a nice evening sunset with one lonely tree standing in the foreground and uh, a lot of uh, atmosphere in the background, beautiful sky, and uh, fairly simple. So uh, hopefully I can do it quickly and uh, not take two hours to do this. And uh, I will get going on it here. I do have a photograph that I've taken and uh, I've also used my photo uh, uh, shop program to overlay uh, the value map so I can kind of keep my values in my mind and I have sketch on my paper. My paper's taped down with uh, glue type paper that many artists use instead of using masking tape. There's some uh, people worry about putting masking tape on the paper because when you pull it off sometimes it peels the paper off but i found that uh, usually with masking tape, I, if I'm very careful, I can peel it off and not damage the paper. Uh, but I'm trying this other uh, type of uh, tape down mechanism today and see how it works. I, it wasn't easy going on as I thought, so I may not do this again. I may go back to masking tape, but we'll use it that way today. So let's get going. Um, the paints that, uh, the brushes that we're using are the Storing Edwards brushes, which I mentioned. We're using a uh, a medium brush, a bristle brush, and small bristle brush. I have a one inch flat, a half inch flat. I have a 12, number 12 round, a number 8 round, a number 6 rigger, and I also have added my own little number 4 rigger, which has a little finer bristles uh, than the Sterling Edwards set, and I will uh, be using that for some of the fine branches. Uh, the paints are the standard set that I've described before, uh, neutral tint. Cyan Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Ultramarine Violet, Crimson Lake, Garnet Lake, Cad Red, Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, and Yellow Ochre, Cupric Green, Golden Lake, Lemon Yellow, Primary Yellow, and on the inside row is Burnt Umber, Sap Green, Auvignon Orange, Primary Red Magenta, and Stilled Grain Brown. And I have those listed on the front of this video. I usually show you a little slideshow in the front that has the paints and the brushes and the materials. The only difference is that I'm using a 300 pound watercolor paper instead of 140 pound watercolor paper as I specify in the front of the video. So kind of like 300 pound, it's a little uh, easier to work on. It doesn't uh, crinkle and, uh, as much as the 140 pound and so it's a little uh, stronger. So let's get going. I'm going to start with uh, just taking clear water and uh, my big medium size um, bristle brush and I'm just going to wet the sky. Start up here at the top and just sort of go over. I do have a sketch on here. You might be able to see it. It's uh, kind of light. Not much to it really. It's just a sort of a lone tree standing out here in the in a farm field with uh, snow all around it and trees in the distance, sun going down behind the trees. So I'm going to just wet this and try to keep it so we uh, have a nice rough edge at the bottom but soft edge at the top and where the sky is. So get that wet down nicely. Okay, so so much for that. Um, <clears throat> my colors today, I'm going to pick up some ultramarine blue here 
for the sky and I want to sort of gray that down with uh, burnt, uh, burnt sienna. My water containers here, I have two water containers. One I try to keep, use for, for dirty water. I wash my brush out. The other one's for clean water. Um, as I put some burnt sienna on here, I'm going to uh, make a small puddle of burnt sienna and I will mix those together with the, the burnt or the, with the uh, ultra blue. And as I do that, if you can see in the palette here, it sort of grays it down a little bit. It gives me some gray, gray tone. Mixing ultramarine blue with burnt sienna gives a nice gray color. And the more blue you want in it, the more you can put, make it to the blue side or you can make it to the red side, depending on how much uh, burnt sienna you put in. Um, another color I'm going to get started here is my some of the color in my sky and I'm going to use this cad red here and sort of orange it up a little bit to uh, give myself some nice bright sunset here with adding yellow primary yellow along with this cad red and um, sort of an orange color sky and I may put a little touch of alizarin in there or crimson uh, crimson lake in the case of my Mary blue colors to sort of give it a slight more reddish color a little brighter color so we got some interesting colors for the sky for the sunset area for the sky and ready to go here let's the paper has now been wet for maybe a minute or two so let's see what happens when we start putting on some color a few streaks of, of this orangish red color and it really hits down here in this area redden it up a little bit put a little more bright red in there see what happens here and go back and get some of the gray uh, a little brighter in here maybe This sky has this uh, sort of angular streaks in it that sort of go like this, that sort of give it a, like high clouds or something that are like this. Go back, a little more blue. Skies, you don't want to mess around too much because you, the more you go in there, the more you have a chance of messing them up. But if you want some nice angular streaks, take your brush and pull it across like that and uh, pick up a little more of my ultra blue here and put a little dark in the corners here. Whoa, picking up way too much blue there. But that's okay because it's wet. We can get it to blend nicely. I think I do want some more red in this horizon area. That may be too much red. But let's try it and see what happens here. Okay, some nice blue color, some streaks of orange. Something like this is probably good enough. We get too much yellow mixing with that blue and we start turning the sky green, which I really don't want to do. All right, very fast, very quick. A few minutes and we got the sky in there. All right, next are the trees in the distance, background trees. Um, they are fairly dark. They're actually almost black in this painting, or in the photograph anyway. So I will uh, put those in and uh, actually, you know what, I don't want to put them in yet because I want to let this dry. And I'm going to force it to dry by using my hair dryer. 
And uh, I will flip off my microphone so it doesn't blow your ears out while I dry this. Okay, <clears throat> that's fairly dry. As long as it feels warm to the touch, or at least the temperature of your finger, it's fairly dry. If it feels cool, it's still wet. So I'm going to use this uh, small brush. It's like a one inch wide brush. I'm going to start getting some colors of these background trees and uh, see if I can put some of those in here in the distance. They sort of go up like this in this area. Very light. Have to be darker than the uh, sky behind them or they won't show up. But you don't want them to be so dark that they... They do get darker as we come forward here, but I want to get this distance. I'm going to put these in. I'm going to paint around my big tree here. Okay. And come back. I've got some of this still to grain brown and uh, burnt umber. that will give me some darker colors in here. So I'm going to start touching in a few of those here. Darkening it up a little bit as we come down the paper. And get a little darker yet. As we come forward, things get darker and more distinct. In the distance, they're soft and indistinct. So we're just painting in a series of trees here that are off in the distance. They do come down to make sure where my horizon line is. It's actually down lower here. and uh, So I'll put another layer in front of those. <clears throat> but these are mostly trees, winter trees. They're, most of them have lost their leaves, but there's so many of them at a distance like that, they look like they're almost solid. So let's keep it running together here. Maybe I want to add a little color to them in a second. <clears throat> I notice my uh, paper tape here with the, has glue on it to keep it down and it uh, definitely doesn't hold when you get it wet. It uh, starts breaking loose up there at the top, so I'm not too happy with that, uh, which may change the type of easy if I may go back to masking tape just because it doesn't do that for one thing and if you're careful I've never had any problem getting masking tape off of the paper some people say that's a problem but I, if you're going to frame the put a mat around this thing you're going to have dark you're going to have the edges covered anyway so if you don't put the masking tape on so far that it's going to show when you finish matting it's not problem anyway, I don't believe. But there may be some purists out there who think that if you damage or scratch the paper in any way, you've sort of violated some rule or something, but I don't adhere to all the rules. So basically we're putting in sort of a reddish brown area back here that's a lot of trees. 
and uh, it's touching the snow so I'm leaving this bottom edge <clears throat> very rough. Paper's dry and uh, I'm not putting in a lot of, uh, I'm not smoothing it out, I'm actually letting it stay very rough. No soft, no soft edges. Soft edges at the top where it sort of blends together with the trees behind them. But um, as it comes down to the snow bank, snow area, I want to keep it rough, rough edge. Okay, stop a minute and step back and look at that. Okay, it's going to be lighter and brighter than the photograph for sure uh, because the photograph turns so many things black. You have to be careful when you paint from photographs. They'll put a lot of photographs, I'll show you a lot of black because that's the only color the computer can pixelate when it takes these images and tries to represent them. But in nature, these colors are not really black. They're, uh, they have browns in them, they have grays in them. If you're out there looking at them, you'll see that. So this little technique with this brush, this is just a big bristle brush that uh, typically you would be using for oil painting possibly. And uh, I'm just putting in flicks of the wrist to make this rows of trees back here look like they're, uh, it's an impressionistic look for these trees. And that's what I'm trying for. All right, I'll kind of get that a little darker maybe at the bottom. Might add a little bit of my uh, neutral tint here, which is like a Payne's Gray. If you don't have neutral tint, you can get a Payne's Gray, and it's almost the identical color. Um, some real dark spots in here we'll throw in. Because this is more in shadow and as the foreground comes toward us. And I'll stop with that. Okay. All right. Making good progress here. We've only been going 15 minutes or so, maybe thereabouts. And uh, we've got sky, our background trees, our middle ground trees. Um, I may want to add some indications of some light trees back here that in a sunset area they're probably hard to see in some cases but I'm going to throw in some scrapes with the uh, end of my brush has this angular tip on it and you can just scrape into this paint if you get it at the right time it will turn white and if you get it too soon it's still wet it will fill back in on you so there's an example where part of that is too wet and part of it is just right so you can see the, the differences in how the paint that's too wet down here, it's going to fill in and darken up. The paint that's up above is going to be just about right to leave those little white streaks in there. So I don't want to do too much of that. It looks sort of contrived if you do, but that will add some interest to that middle ground and makes it look like there's more trees in there as well. Maybe a couple more here. Good enough. Okay. I don't know when to stop. Get carried away with stuff like this. Okay, so I have a nice rough edge down here. Um, I uh, will run from my water there, but that's all right. Not a problem. I do paint watercolors vertically. That's unusual. Most painters you see that have had videos created in a production studio have overhead cameras and they lay their painting down on a maybe a tilted uh, easel, but they uh, don't paint vertically because of this problem of running. But uh, I'm a one-man show here and I have my own camera in my own studio and kind of doing my own thing. and. Uh, I don't want to uh, have to put in an infrastructure overhead for cameras, so I'll just deal with the runs and deal with the vertical painting, which has not caused me too many problems so far. All right, where are we? I'm ready to start on some of this foreground now. I'm going to get my uh, 
colors for the snow is really I'm going to use this uh, ultra blue again and try to darken it up and we'll make some nice blue and some gray again I may add a little more of this uh, burnt sienna again to give me some gray areas in the snow so I can use that or I could use my neutral tint to get some grays. We put a little neutral tint out here as well. So I've got some ultra blue neutral tint and and uh, ultra or, uh, burnt sienna. I'll get it right yet. So combinations of those will give me grays and blues for the snow. So this is going to be a warm painting for a winter scene because of all the reds and the, the browns that I have in here which is really nice um, but I want to start here with the uh, snow I'm going to start with this ultra blue and just see if I can put in some some areas that are sort of in shadow too dark maybe but And I want to put these in in a way that leaves some white areas, even though the photograph was all one sort of bluish gray color. I don't want that. I want to have some areas that lead your eye into the painting and uh, maybe leave some areas that look like the snow is still in either white or gray. And uh, I'm actually bleeding them together over here where the brown's coming down. And we can take uh, one of our brushes and sort of soften part of the edges here to give ourselves a little bit of area that looks like it's blending into the, to the white areas of the snow. Like this, maybe on this side here we'll do a little of that. When you do that it gives it this nice soft edge and makes you think you're The hard edge makes it look like there's a, a, a dip or something in the snow. The soft edge looks like it's blending together. So over here we got something similar. And I want to change the color a little bit, make it a little grayer over here. Leave some spots. And soften some areas. We'll paint that tree in over that. And to the right over here is going to be fairly dark. All right, what's that looking like? No. Interesting sky. Got a few streaks in there. Um, okay. All right. Let's let that set for a while. Clean out my brushes. Clean out my palette. I'm going to come back and start on this tree. And uh, finish off with the tree and we'll be done. It's really a fast painting. Fairly simple. Hope you're able to follow along and uh, try this at home. I'm going to get my uh, half inch flat brush. And for this tree I'm going to take some clear water. And on one side it's going to be soft since the, the sun is sort of setting over here in this area so the left side of this tree should be a little brighter than the right side so I'm going to put in some water here on the left side of the tree it's clear water just leave myself a an area where I can blend blend this together and put some darks on the right of that and it will it will actually make it look rounded which is the idea 
Okay, now, this tree in the photograph is black. But I'm not going to paint it black. I'm going to paint it fairly dark, but not black. So I'm going to get myself a good mixture here of burnt umber and still the grain brown. Maybe stick a little blue in there to darken it down in some areas, dark grays. So I have about two or three colors values there. Start with this dark mixture and where I have this water on there, if I run my brush up like this and let it touch that water on the left, it will soften and make a uh, nice rounded edge. As long as that water is not too dry Something like this. One over here. So you can kind of see how the water is pulling, pulling that paint over. And if it doesn't do it just right to suit me, I'll go back and put some more water in there. But um, this is kind of how you make a tree with a flat brush. Drawing in some branches here. I'm going to use my rigger in a minute to get some very, very fine branches, but let's just do this for now. Um, trying to get this darker on the right side. Let me put a little more. That blue will make it darker. I'll put that blue and burnt umber together. We'll give you a good dark color. It has to be darker than what's behind it, or you won't see the tree. So. Something like that. Don't want both of those feet of that tree to look identical. I'm going to grab my brush here and put in some grasses and things around it. A bristle brush. You can take this bristle brush and make some nice little flicks like this and all of a sudden you sort of build in a nice connection to the ground. You want your objects like trees to be connected to the ground. If you don't connect them, they're, they look like you glued them on. You don't want to look like it's glued on. All right, I'm picking up my small number eight round here and just see if I can touch in a few more dark spots in this some of these branches here run them out like this this has a fine point on it but not nearly as fine as the uh, rigger I'll show you in a minute when I put that rigger to the test but um, this will make some branches that are somewhere between the ones I made with the flat brush and the ones I'm going to make with the rigger. Okay. Stop. Step back. Look at it. What's it need? Looks pretty lonely and skimpy right now. But we're going to fix that. Compared to the photograph, there's, the photograph has thousands of branches, but we can't paint thousands of branches. We will be, one would be here all day and two, it would be so busy that it didn't look right. Nature can give us thousands of branches, but if you put it in a painting like that, you will be doing a disservice. You want to use your artistic license and change it. Looks more artistic if there's fewer. Less is more is one of the phrases I've heard my some of my workshop instructors say. That phrase comes from a guy named Edgar Whitney, who was one of the 
teachers of many, many fine watercolor artists in the United States. And he would always say, remember, less is more. See how fine the branches get when I put this rigor on here? This makes a whole lot of difference. Much smaller. Put a little bump there like this. So I don't have to paint thousands of branches to make it, you think there's thousands of branches out here. I just get a small brush like this and just take very fine strokes like this and you'll see all kinds of things. Your eye will fill in the areas where there's a gap and you will make it. All right. Now we're getting a lot of nice branches. It looks like a nice abstract shape for a tree. If I were to draw a line around this, it would have an abstract shape. It wouldn't be a circle. It wouldn't be an ellipse. It wouldn't be a square. It'd have an abstract shape. Okay. I don't know when to stop here. Okay, so much for that. Now, I'm going to put some leaves on those trees, and really not leaves. These are this is this is a, a watercolor technique to make it look like there's thousands of branches, and uh, yet you don't paint thousands of branches. But I'm getting my one-inch flat brush, getting it with this paint in it, and I'm going to take the paper towel and sort of soak the water out of the bottom of this. I'm gonna, so that's making it kind of a dry brush, even though it's wet. And when I touch this to the paper, if I touch it just right, it will just scrape off a little bit of very fine, very fine marks that make it look like, make you think, I need more paint in there. I think I sucked out too much paint. Make it look like there's some very light, fluffy, could be leaves, could be more branches. Don't really know. But this helps fill out this tree and helps make it look like it's got a lot of little things out there at the edges. Put some on the inside. Maybe could be branches, they could be anything. All right, step back, look at it. Okay, this uh, technique works well for these, uh, any kind of dry brush you want to put in. I'll put a few more marks back in here that can get me some more dry brush. Since I got this brush with, like that, and all of a sudden you see See more trees back here in the distance. The dry brush is quite a... Some people call it scumbling, where you just take a brush and let the bristles kind of skim over the paper, or you can do it in oil painting. It skims over the canvas, and it will just take off a little bit of, a little bit of paint and just leaves these very nice, airy, fluffy-looking marks. All right, I think that's all I want to do for that tree. I'm going to go back now and see if I can do just a little more with the uh, snow in the foreground and uh, get some of this brown out of here, out of my palette. <clears throat> and I think I'm going to finish it up here. with. I'm going to use this number eight round, see if I can get myself a few more Things that look like areas where the snow is sort of built up here, maybe like that. Some dark areas. And 
I'm going to sort of soften the back edge of that, or the front edge of it, I guess I would call it. Soft edge by putting some water on my brush, wiping out the brush, and then letting the brush just tickle this front edge and let it blend. Like this. Some over here. So I'm sort of blending that in to the snow that's in front of it. And uh, there's another use for the uh, dry brush is where you can take it and just sort of skim it like this and you end up with rough areas where the brush hit the paper and leaves marks. Looks like more, more um, little banks or areas that have snow in them. I'm going to touch this up a little bit in here. I don't want this particular shape to be looking like that, but let's put that in. Um, and keep messing with this for a long time, I suppose, but I'm going to put in some more dark, dark blues here on the uh, corners to sort of force your eye into the center. Another typical technique that many people use to force the eye where you want it to go. I want you to sort of look around. I want your eye to go in and walk around this tree and walk back into this area, get back into the woods. If I can make you daydream a little bit, that's a might be considered a successful painting by many artists. But you be the judge whether this is a successful painting or not. I'm going to put in a few more darks here. And step back one more time. See if I've got light right. Abstract shapes right. Sky right. I think that's going to do it. Uh, I'm going to stop for now. And uh, zoom back and say... Thank you again for watching, and thanks for tuning into my YouTube channel, and thanks for subscribing, and uh, hope you like this painting. Hope you give it a try. Give me some comments. Let me know what you like and what you don't like, and give me some suggestions on other paintings that I might do, and I'll try to do them for you. So, until I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton signing off, saying so long for now. Bye.